there is a new project called Shura TV, where we are looking to educate, entertain, and be the leading voice for our Muslim American brothers and sisters here in America and bring awareness of change established by Muslims. Whether it is a global change, innovative change, leadership change, or community change, and by supporting the Muslims and the community at large. Shura TV is going to bring innovative ideas and projects to your homes. Our vision is one. We are Shura. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Chaplain Sundus, and I am honored and grateful to be able to um, have this opportunity to share some brief remarks on how to maintain spiritual wellness and spiritual health in these times of crisis and uncertainty. As we know, um, there are three dimensions to our being. We have the mind, the body, and the soul. Alhamdulillah, in our community, we have experts who are able to advise us on best practices and ways to be able to maintain our physical health, maintain our mental health, and what we may not realize is that our spiritual health may also um, be prone to suffering during these times. Um, some of us might be um, hearing these messages of using these times to be able to enhance our connection with Rabbil Alameen, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe we're finding that it's actually really difficult to do so. Maybe we're finding that we have all this extra time, but we're not using it in the ways that we would want to. Um, in memorizing more Qur'an, or listening to more lectures, or spending more time on the prayer mat. And perhaps you're wondering why. Um, there is a, a famous psychologist by the name of Abraham Maslow who posits this theory called the hierarchy of needs, where he basically says that as human beings, in order for us to reach our full potential, or as he calls it, self-actualization, we need to have certain things um, in, um, foundationally that are set for us that make us feel safe and make us feel like we belong to a community and make us feel like we have a sense of security in order for us to reach that potential. So if I'm going to reframe this theory a little bit and talk about it in terms of spirituality and in the context of the crisis that we have going on right now with the pandemic, um, I hope that this alleviates some of the guilt or shame or um, or feeling of inadequacy that some of us might be feeling that we're not realizing our full spiritual potential. Um, so stress is known to block spiritual connection. And if we're looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, at the very bottom of the pyramid is physiological needs, which are just basic needs of um, sense that we can have access to food, to water, to clothing, to just the basic survival needs, right? Right on top of that is a feeling of safety, physical safety, emotional safety, mental safety. Above that, social belonging, a sense of community, and that we have a belonging to a group of people, that we have this identity. And above that is self-esteem, that we have, we cultivate this, this um, pride and this sense of, of self-esteem in ourselves. And if we have all of those things in place and all of those foundations, then we have an opportunity and the potential to self-actualize, to meet all of our goals. So if we're looking at it in, in these times, right, some of us, um, for example, might be small business owners who have families, or some of us might be working um, in roles that, uh, where we need to be in a physical space, that we can't do it remotely from home. And so we are... are physiological needs are being threatened, right? We're seeing all of this, um, this, this chaos that comes out of grocery shopping and people hoarding and we feel like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough food, I don't have enough water, I don't have enough clothing, I don't have access to these things like I usually had. Boom, that one is threatened. Then we talk about this feeling of emotional and physical safety being bombarded with this messages of if you go outside, if you, um, um, you know, if you get closer to somebody more than six feet, then you're going to contract the virus or you're going to get sick or something bad is going to happen to you. Boom. That, that block is also removed. Um, social belonging. We're quarantined at home and we're being told that we should stay at home and that we shouldn't be seeing people. Community suddenly is removed. Um, Self-esteem. All of these roles that we have and these identities 
um, at work, at school, um, within the community. Suddenly we're at home and we're not being able to, to, um, to work and, and play into these identities and roles. And what does that do to our sense of self-esteem? So if you're seeing this cascading effect, this domino effect in our hierarchy of needs, it's, we can begin to understand why we're having trouble to self-actualize, why we're having maybe trouble to reach the spiritual potential that we want to have during this time. Um, and so while we should um, take this beautiful advice of using this time and using the free time that we have to deepen our connection with Rabbil Alameen, I also want to be able to, to share and to say to you that it's okay to be realistic about these goals. Set spiritual goals for yourself that make sense for you. And while we want to be able to do all the things that we're being advised to do, these are also just suggestions. And so be self, have some self-compassion and have some grace um, for yourself. And you don't have to beat yourself up or feel, be made to feel guilty that you're not being able to do all these things right now in this moment of crisis when we're also dealing with the loss of all of these other things um, in our hierarchy of needs. So what others can accomplish, um, those don't have to be your goals. The good news is, is that Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has gifted us a plethora and a variety of tools in our toolbox from our beautiful tradition that meet the needs of every single unique personality. Um, if you want to think about, begin to think about what are the tools that are um, best equipped to help you through this crisis, think back to times when you could self-actualize, when the physiological and the safety piece and the community piece was there and the self-esteem place was there. What are the rituals or the tools or the ways that you connected? Um, what are those uh, that were really nourishing to you in that times of in the time of balance in the time of spiritual health for you and that's going to look different for each person so what I like to what I might um, suggest is that during this time rather than just thinking about spiritual actualization and getting to know Allah part of getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is getting to know ourselves there's a beautiful hadith that says, whosoever knows himself knows his Lord. Get to know yourself. Get to know your spiritual makeup. Get to know the soul that lives within the shell of your body. Right? This is a beautiful time to be able to do that. Um, there's this uh, concept called the five love languages um, that was written by Gary Chapman. And if we want to take these, these um, kind of Western or sociological um, frameworks and then put an Islamic or spiritual spin on them, um, which is something that I enjoy doing. Let's look at the five love, love languages through spiritual love languages. So in other words, you know, we have, um, you know, gifting, we have quality time, we have words of affirmation, um, we have service and we have touch. These are all five ways in which we show and receive love. So if you want to think about it from an Islamic um, or spiritual point of view, what are the languages that help you connect to Allah, that help you show your love and connection to Rabbil Alameen, and that also help you to receive or feel like you're receiving love and connection from Rabbil Alameen? So if we want to look at gifts during this time, um, maybe you have, um, maybe you have a, a proclivity or a talent for, for being able to write letters, write beautiful letters, and that's something that you can gift. Writing even beautiful text messages, uplifting um, other people, that this is something that you can gift somebody else. Maybe it's about donating, maybe it's about food sharing, that these are ways and, and tools and techniques that speak to you and make you feel like you are connected to something larger than yourself. Let's take acts of service. Maybe you want to be like um, Khadija radiallahu radi anha, where she connected um, Rasulullah sallallahu when he got the revelation, when he received the first revelation in the cave, and he came running down, and she cloaked him, and she comforted him. And what did she do? She reminded him of all of the beautiful attributes and, the, and strengths and qualities that he had, and she also connected him to her cousin. Right? She knew her own limitations, and she said, but I know somebody who can help. Maybe this is your role. Maybe this is something that you can do is connect other people to resources that they may need. 
Um, what about touch, dhikr? Maybe holding um, the misbaha, the prayer beads, maybe um, the clicking of the beads, having that touch, that somatic therapy is something that is nourishing and calming and sustaining for you. Being able to, to speak these words of prayer and, and remind yourself of the greater attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe through touch, um, you are an artist and you create. Maybe you are somebody who finds beauty amid harshness and difficulty. And you can share that beauty with other people who might not have that, that artistic eye. Um, quality time. Maybe you're somebody who really finds a grounding in salah, in meditation, in stillness, in breathing. Um, quality time with other people. Maybe you want to create community. You put together a Zoom platform or, or bring people together um, virtually in some different way and be able to restore that balance of community and quality time with other people. Maybe you do a great job at active listening and you can receive other people's stories and other people's burdens during this time and also tell your story and share your narrative and have somebody receive that from you. And finally, words of affirmation. Maybe a Quran is something that uh, lightens your, your heart and gives you hope. Maybe it's revisiting those ayat about tawakkul or inna ma'al usri yusra. Or maybe it's about revisiting a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu is reminding us in so many different ways that this world is not our home, that this world is promises discomfort and difficulty and trials and challenges. So just like uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us in the Qur'an and the ayah as well. Maybe it's um, words of affirmation by listening to your favorite khatib or your favorite scholar and revisiting um, lectures on YouTube. There are all these different ways, subhanAllah, of connecting and to deepen your spirituality and your connection. And it's really a matter of finding what nourishes you and what speaks to you and understanding that what nourishes somebody else and speaks to somebody else may not be the same for you and that's okay, but it's a matter of finding what is it that, that um, fits you and fits your unique personality. Allah has given us a, a variety um, of different things because subhanAllah he knows that each one of us is different just like each one of us has a different love language each one of us also has this, a different language of spirituality and a way to connect and so how do we move forward from here um, in the Quran Allah tells us لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. in other words verily or indeed we have honored the children of Adam Allah has gifted us with this unique faculty of wanting to make meaning out of anything. But especially during times of crisis and difficulty, we may find ourselves asking why. Why is this happening? What is the purpose of it? What is the meaning of it all? We, we, we crave answers. And subhanAllah, we each need to go through the process of digging deep and sitting with these larger questions for ourselves because what may be a satisfying answer for somebody else may not satisfy us in the way that we're looking for. So when you feel ready, when you feel like um, you've gone through a little bit of the stages of grief which begin with shock and denial and turn into anger and turn into bargaining um, and turn into maybe a little bit of sadness and depression. When we reach this, this phase called acceptance, which is not necessarily that we just um, can accept everything and be happy with it, but more like we reach a place of, of peace and a place of balance and stability where we can begin to carry the burden with us and understand why we're carrying it. When you reach this space and when you're ready, um, there are a few questions that I would um, recommend that you sit with and you start to ask yourself, maybe even write it down in a journal. Um, how are you making sense of this? What surprises you about this situation? Um, what are you learning about yourself in these times of difficulty and crisis? Um, have your views on trials and tribulations, on challenges, on pain and suffering, have your religious views on these concepts changed during this time? How so? And has your community stepped up for you? What are the ways in which the community has stepped up? And what are the ways that you feel like the community has failed you? And what has been that impact on you? So in closing, 
research has proven that spirituality and religion is one of the best ways of coping with difficulty and trial. Um, our religious traditions, our religious values, our religious principles, our religious rituals can be a, an amazing and wonderful opportunity for us um, to find relief and to find resiliency and comfort and peace um, during these challenging times. When we have a deeper understanding of ourselves, of what we value, of what we honor, and be able to have a spiritual foundation and a deeper connection, we can better adapt to and manage our uh, life stressors during this time. And boy, are we being stressed. Um, the fact is, honestly, we have maybe been training for this for a very, very long time, for years, if not for some of us, decades. If we think about it, Allah, the most merciful, the most generous, has been giving us ways and outlets in which we have been disciplining ourselves and training ourselves for difficulty. In Ramadan, we fast for 30 days where we choose to deny ourselves the comfort of you know, daily meals and snacks until a certain appointed time. We go through hun hunger. We've experienced hunger. We know what it's like to be without food or to have to defer what we want to eat until later. We know what it's like to leave behind family members and to be disconnected from community and have to leave work and have to leave the comforts of our home when we embark on the Hajj pilgrimage, where we're going into a, a free-for-all zone, um, where we don't have a schedule, where we don't have a routine, where we're enduring physical and spiritual and mental hardship. Um, we pray five times a day, sometimes when it's not very convenient for us, but also the five Prayer times serve as a touch point, five touch points throughout the day that we can learn to um, organize and schedule ourselves around. Every year we pay zakah and we force ourselves to, um, to separate from uh, our, our worldly goods and our worldly comforts and our money. We're losing money, right? We willingly give this up. All these different ways in which we've been training for difficulty We've tasted this before. Maybe we just don't realize it because some of us sometimes tend to compartmentalize Islam and put it in this box of here's what I'm going to do Islamically for myself and then we live our real lives or we live the rest of our lives. But what we may not realize is that really there's a beautiful blending of this, that Islam and the rituals we have are meant to prepare us for something bigger than ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises will come. So we can and we will get through this, inshallah. Um, we have the tools, we have the techniques at our disposal to be able to reach our potential and our self-actualization, our spiritual potential. So remember to be realistic about your spiritual goals. Be, have self-compassion and have some grace for yourself. Have patience with yourself. You're not going to do everything in the first two weeks. Um, this is going to be... Um, a marathon and not a sprint, so we have time. Um, and uh, find yourself, get to know yourself. If you want to know Rabbil Alameen, get to know who you are, how you best connect to him, inshallah. I pray that um, this passes quickly and smoothly, inshallah. I pray that Allah alleviates um, the burdens and uh, the barriers for everybody who's been afflicted with this mentally or physically or spiritually. And I pray, inshallah, that we are able to find ourselves and to find our love language to best connect with our um, most merciful and most generous and most compassionate creator. I mean.